Okay, let's talk about the FTC exam. And if you're watching this video, I'm sure uh, you're either going to be a teacher in Florida or you're currently a teacher in Florida. And as you probably well know, the FTC um, uh, exam series, there's many exams, and depending on what you're going to be teaching, you take the exam that you need to take. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about the elementary education uh, K-6 exam. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about uh, math uh, that you may very well encounter on it. So um, basically, the mathematics that you really want to be focused on for this uh, exam is basically high school, fundamental high school mathematics. So that would be like your algebra and your geometry. Okay, you don't really need to go really, really advanced, but you know, my belief, and let me just tell you very brief, briefly about myself, I'm a teacher myself, taught middle school all the way through college, um, have a, a degree in mathematics, gone through, uh, got my master's in education. So been teaching, I, I definitely know what it's like to be a classroom teacher and go through various exams. And I can tell you one thing, you got to treat these uh, exams with re uh, respect, okay? Because you can fail them if you don't put the effort in. So I'm here to help you out with the math portion of it. And if you think that you um, like my teaching style, then I'm going to encourage you to check out my FTC um, FTCE Elementary Education K-6 exam math prep course. So I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you're looking for a real great way to review and learn mathematics okay I think you'll be pretty uh, pleased with my program but that's aside from the point what I want to do now is get into this math problem okay so this would be a, a, a type of problem that I think um, for you should be able to handle uh, for this particular exam so it's basically going to just require you I'm not going to tell you well I'm, of course I'm going to solve this and I'm going to tell you what I want you what you, what I want you to do here in a second but uh, you need to be comfortable with working with variables um, as a uh, teacher. And even if you're not teaching mathematics, okay, you still you need to be, you know, it's just your kind of general well-roundedness, if you will, as a professional educator. So here we have a, kind of a fundamental algebra problem. And what I'd like you to do is to simplify it. Okay, and I'll give you a little bit of a hint. What I want you to do here is add these fractions, then... I want you to go ahead and take care of this operation with the result of adding those fractions, okay? When you get done with it, you'll have your answer, all right? So if you want to pause the video and give that a whirl, uh, but I'm obviously going to go through it right now. Okay, so what we're going to do here is first add these fractions, okay? Now, how do you add fractions with a bunch of variables in them? Well, you do it the same way you um, uh, same procedure as if they were numbers. Now I'm going to give you, if you stick with me, you're going to be very happy that you did because I'm going to give you an outstanding um, way to add fractions. Okay, there, it's going to make your life a lot easier. All right, so let's say I had something like this. Let's just make an example problem. Okay, and it's obviously pretty basically the same structure, right? I'm adding two fractions and I'm going to multiply by another fraction. Now I'm going to just go through the mechanics of this because we're going to use the same procedure to to um, handle this problem. Now the big thing is uh, for a lot of students is they'll look at the, how to add fractions and they'll say, oh I have to get the lowest common denominator, in this case it's going to be 15, uh, then I have to go and multiply both the top and bottom here by 3, multiply this by top and bottom by 5, etc, etc. So I'm pretty sure that you already know how to do that. Okay, I'm just going to assume that you do. However, I'm going to give you a great shortcut. So here I'm going to draw a little happy face because you're going to want to remember this. Okay, alright, so here's what you do. Right, so you're going to, let me actually break this out here, give ourselves some more room. And this works whether you're adding or subtracting fractions, okay? I call it the bow tie method. So the way it works is this. We're going to multiply across like so. Okay, we're going to multiply across this way. And then we're going to multiply this way, all right? So let's show you how this is going to work. 
Okay, so I'm going to multiply this way. 2 times 3, I start from this diagonal. 2 times 3 is 6. Now because this is an addition problem, I'm going to put plus, and I'm going to go 5 times 1 is 5. Okay, This constructs the two crisscrosses here, construct my numerator, but it's important that this one here, this 2 times 3, this diagonal going downward is your first number. Okay, Because this will make a difference when you're doing uh, subtraction. Okay, so 2 times 3 is 6, 5 times 1 is 5 in its addition, so now I have my numerator. And then you're going to multiply this way, 5 times 3 is 15. And take a look at the answer, 11 fifteenths. Pretty simple, I'm done. Okay, I don't have to think about it. All right. And this can work with anything. If I have A over B plus C over D, this works the same way. Okay. We're going to go this times this, this times this, this times this. So this is going to be A times D, which is A, D. Now this is addition plus B times C is B, C over B times D, B, D. And that's it. Okay. So if you, you know, re can remember this, this is really going to help you out with uh, fraction problems. Now, one of the small disadvantages with this particular problem is that sometimes when you do this, you may not have the lowest common denominator, so it's important that you reduce your final answer, okay? So here we have 11 fifteenths. So let's write this here, 11 fifteenths times 1 fourth, right? So how do we multiply fractions? Well, remember here, this is not division, right? So what we're going to do is just go ahead and simply multiply across. So some of you might be like, oh, what is it? Do you, do, do you flip and then it turns into multiplication? No. With multiplication of fractions, like 2 thirds times uh, 1 fourth, you multiply straight across. So hopefully you guys remember that. That's 2 over 12 or 1 6. But if this was division, okay, yeah, let's write it over here, 2 times third, 2 thirds divided by 1 fourth. This is where you flip this fraction, right? So this would be 2 thirds times 4 over 1, and then you just go ahead and proceed from there. So what I find with a lot of students, and I teach a lot of people who've been doing this for a long time, whether, and I'm uh, people, even if they were great at math, if you've been away from math for a long period of time, you need to review. You need to do practice problems. You need to, you know, really spend time with the subject. You just, if you just go in and just peruse, do a few problems here and there, you're putting yourself at big risk at, at not passing these exams. Okay, um, I can tell you, you know, I've taken plenty of teacher uh, certification exams, and each one I had to study pretty pretty hard okay it's a profession obviously I don't have to tell you that teaching is a profession and so these are professional exams and they're not designed to be you know kind of give away easy exams for just anybody to pass right so the more you work on your math skills the better off you're going to be you know not only for this test but just in your careers teaching and just in life in general okay that's my personal belief but let's get back to this problem now all right so I taught you the little, uh, you know, I call it the bow tie method of, of adding a fraction. So let's go to apply it here. So this would be x times z is xz plus y times w is yw over y times z is yz. And now I'm going to multiply by 1 over yz. So when I do this, I'm going to multiply the numerators and I'm going to multiply the denominators, okay? So 1 times xz plus yw, 1 times anything is just itself, so this is just going to be xz plus yw over y squared times y squared is what? Hopefully, hopefully you answered yz parentheses squared. See, you've got to be careful here. If you said yz squared, this mathematically is just yz to the second power. The squared is on the z. You have to put this whole thing in parentheses. So all these little details count. And if you were facing a multiple choice question and 
you and they had this as an as an option they're kind of suckering you in to get the wrong answer as a math teacher or teachers in general you, you know one of your things that you're going to do is you make you make tests you construct assessments and sometimes you you know you're thinking about the student like hey what are the what are the common things that that a student will uh you know confuse and and whatnot and believe me you see these type of they invite you to select these nice wrong answers that look pretty close but because you're not paying attention or you're completely focused or you just don't know okay you can easily get the problems uh wrong i can't tell you how many people that i know especially with a lot of standardized tests walk out of the test and maybe this has been your experience they'll take the, the they'll take the test and they'll come out of the test feeling great They'll be like, oh, wow, I did really, really good. I answered it. All my selections were there. Da, 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 da. Then they get their scores and they're like shocked because they didn't do too well. All right. So just because you see your answer or you're, you're feeling like you know what you're doing, you, you know, you got to be um, you got to be careful, especially when it comes to math. And the only way you're going to um, really increase your sense of certainty in mathematics and your abilities and skills is just to keep working at it so if you like my teaching style i literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my youtube channel um, that can help you out for this exam if you want to check out my um, uh, specific course on the ftc elementary education k6 exam i'll leave the link in the description of the video hey if you like the video I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback let me know um what you think of taking the FTC is it do you find it easy do you find it difficult do you have questions or whatnot that I'll I get a lot of comments on my videos but I do try to read as many as I can it lets me know how I'm doing it gives me um, ideas for future videos but with that being said you know as a fellow school teacher you know we need great teachers in this country so um, and I'm sure the state of Florida would love to have more and more uh, as many great teachers as possible so just the fact that you're even in the game here tells tells me a lot about you so i only wish you all the best and uh, thanks for watching and have a great day